The name of this video is Photoshop and Blender Part 4, Color Math. In this tutorial, I'll show how to adjust colors by separating the image into its red, green, and blue channels, and then using the Math node, the Map Value node, and the Color Ramp node to add or subtract from each channel, and finally combining the channels back into the composited image. We'll use the Vermont Railway Antique Locomotive image I used in earlier Photoshop and Blender tutorials. When I took the picture, I used what some might consider an antique 2 megapixel digital camera. It was a cloudy day in the early afternoon. I'd like to make the colors, especially the red locomotive, stand out more. So let's get started. I'm in the Blender default scene. We'll completely ignore it. Jump immediately into the composite setup and check the Use Nodes checkbox. I'll make one additional tweak to the setup. I'll get rid of the 3D window, which is just getting in the way, and give it space over to the image editor window that will be used to show the composited result. I'll press F12 to render. In the RGB, red, green, and blue color model, each pixel's color is stored as a number between 0 and 255. If you left click and drag the mouse inside the composited image window, you can see the percentage of red, green, and blue in the particular pixel where the mouse is located. If I drag within the cubes area, you can see that even though the cube is gray, the color is really a mixture of a small amount of red, green, and blue, averaging between 10 and 20 percent of each. The area where the cube is unlit is totally black, with no red, green, or blue. As a side note, the A represents the alpha channel. The A value is 1, totally opaque, when the mouse is inside the cube, and 0, totally transparent, when the mouse is outside the cube which is what you would expect if you watched the last video on transparency. I'll delete the Render Layers node. We now have nothing to do with the 3D aspect of Blender. And add an Image node, opening our locomotive image. I'll add a Scale node to scale the image down 0.4 in the X direction and 0.3 in the Y direction to show the entire image. And click on the down arrow to collapse the scale parameters, adding some screen real estate for our noodle. By the way, this node setup is informally called a noodle. I think it's a good term because if you look at some complicated node setups such as the ones for Big Buck Bunny or the other Blender videos, they can get quite complicated and look something like a bowl of noodles. Back to our story. Before actually doing the color correction, I'll hook up the scale node to the composite node and press F12. I'll left click and drag within the locomotive area. You can see that the red, the R value, is not pure red. It averages around 30 to 40 percent. And there's also some green and blue. Down in the black area, there's not much red at all, although there is some. It's not completely black like the cube shadow was. In reality, unless you're deep inside a cave, there's always some color in the darker areas. Our eye immediately senses the phoniness of an all-black shadow. Having some color and graininess to shadows is one of the keys to making a computer graphics image believable. I don't believe there's an all-black pixel anywhere in this image. We're going to look at the converter nodes. These convert one value to another. In particular, we're going to separate the image into its red, green, and blue channels. I'll add the, separate RG, the, I'll add the separate RGBA. We won't deal with the alpha in this video node. The idea is to separate each channel and do some color math magic and then combine the channel back for the final result. The Combine node is called Combine RGBA. I'll add the Combine RGBA node near the compositor and give you a clearer idea of the left to right logic flow. I'll hook up the R, G, B, and A sockets of the separate RGBA node to the corresponding sockets of the Combine RGBA node. Then I'll hook up the image socket of the combined RGBA node to the composite node. We can now see the original image. We're now ready to do some color math. I want to emphasize the red. I'll add a math converter, Shift A Converter Math. I'll click on the drop down box. The math node does exactly what it says. You can do some mathematical operation, simple ones like add, subtract, multiply, and divide, or more complex ones like tangent or arc sign. I'll select Add, and in the value box, enter 0.5. Then I'll hook the Math node to the red channel of the combined RGBA node. What happened? 
the entire image got reddened. I'll move around the image. Look at the R value and you'll see that the red values of the locomotive are around the 70% and 80% levels. But the grass also became red, around 50%. Let's look at the sky. The sky is now 150% red. This is actually a potential problem. What does 150% of red really mean? And we'll return to that later. We can also subtract color. Let's subtract 50% from the red channel. This can be done by either adding negative 0.5 or subtracting 0.5 by selecting subtract. In either case, we've removed all the red except for a tiny area of the locomotive that was about 70% red to begin with. The locomotive is now mostly blue. I'll move around the image. This time, most of the R values are negative, which introduces the same problem as before except in the other direction when the colors are combined. If we multiply by 0.5, we mute the red a bit more. If we multiply by 1.5, we see more red, as with add, but we still have the danger of going beyond 1. I'll delete the math node. We can fix the problem of not going higher than 1 or lower than 0 by using the map value node. The map value node is found in the vector section, shift A vector map value. I'll add a map value node and hook it up. Its sockets are called value because it's basically converting one value to another. In this case it's a red value, but the socket doesn't really care. It's just the number. Between red sockets of the separate RGBA and combined RGBA nodes. Map value works like this. It adds the value in the offset to the supplied value. Then it multiplies the value in the size area. Finally, if use maximum or use minimum checkboxes are checked, it doesn't allow the value to go beyond the use maximum value or to go below the use minimum value. So with the checkboxes checked, no value can go below 0 or above 1. I'll add 0.5 to the offset and sample the result. I'll reset the offset to 0 and multiply by 0.5. I'll check the use maximum and use minimum buttons. Note that the red color values don't go below zero or above one. Finally, I'd like to introduce you to the color ramp node. It's one we'll use a lot in future tutorials. The purpose of the color ramp is to create a grayscale image of the red channel. Think of a color ramp as a gradient from black to white. Black means no red, white means all red, and the grays are some percentage in between. I'll hook up the scaled locomotive image to the FAC factor socket of the color ramp, which then evaluates the percentage for each pixel. And then I'll feed the result to the composite node. Then I'll sample the composited result. Note that the sky is all white. It was white in the original, so that has 100% red. The locomotive is a relatively bright gray. The grass is a darker gray and the black thingy is still close to black because its pixels contain only a bit of red. I hope you now have a better idea of how color math can be used to correct color in an image. We'll go into color correction in more detail in future videos. See you in the next tutorial. Happy blendering!